What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Vintech, the show that normally takes way too long for episodes to come out. Um, doing a kind of a rapid fire thing today. Um, I just put out a video uh, yesterday, and uh, I've got a couple of days where there's not anybody here at the house, so um, I can record in peace. Um, today we're going to be talking about um, kind of <clears throat> a project that demonstrates the beauty of um, <laughs> Linux and things like Linux, where you can just kind of fork it and fork it and fork it and fork it um, until you get what you want. Um, uh, the thing that I'm talking about specifically is Arch Labs um, Linux. I, I got a few comments on a video I did a while back um, on, was it Anarchy Linux, I think? Um, that was kind of a cool, um, you know, a little bit of a kind of a cool thing uh, if you're trying to get sort of a more stock um, arch system um, without having to use something like Manjaro, which has got, you know, it's, it's not quite just straight arch. It's also, um, it's got its own kernel and its own release um, cycle on uh, packages and things like that. So... For people who want a more stock Arch system, I thought Anarchy wouldn't be that bad of a way to go. Um, this one, Arch Labs, is, I believe, is <laughs> it's based on several different things. Um, obviously, it's Arch-based, but it says, Inspired by Bunsen Labs, powered by Arch Linux. So Bunsen Labs, as far as I'm aware, is the project that replaced um, CrunchBang. And CrunchBang was like a Debian-based um, open box distribution, which was, I mean, it was pretty nice. It was very lightweight, obviously. Open box doesn't use a whole lot of system resources, but um, it was a neat little system. And for a while, they were making uh, a distro called ArchBang that was also based on, on CrunchBang. So I guess um, Arch Labs Linux is to Bunsen Labs what Crunch or what ArchBang was to CrunchBang, uh, which I think is kind of cool. Um, the beauty, the real beauty of Arch Labs is that it comes with um, this. Um, when you boot it up, it takes you right into the uh, the console. It says right here, Arch Labs ISO does not come with a live environment. You're straight to the console, the installer is launched from there. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you how to install Arch Labs Linux. And uh, I haven't actually done it. I, I assume that it's pretty easy. I'm just going to kind of go, go through it with you. Um, I've done a lot of different Linux installations you know, through the terminal, not through the terminal, whatever. Um, so it shouldn't be that bad. Hopefully I don't run into any hitches. If I do, I'll just edit the video and fix them and we'll go from there. Um, my end goal is to do a video on the installed Arch Labs um, virtual machine and configure it the way that I would configure it to use if I wanted to use an Arch-based Linux distribution. Um, it won't be OpenBox. It'll probably be something like XFCE, although, of course, you can install any other desktop environment you want. Um, but I actually recall um, Spatry a while back. He's a bigger um, Linux YouTuber and most people who are on my channel probably would have heard of Spatry at some point. Um, he did a video a long time ago about taking ArchBang and configuring it the way that he would configure his system. And so I'm going to do something similar um, with Arch Labs. It's a much more updated image, obviously. Um, it seems to be a pretty well maintained project. So. Um, that is what we're going to do today. So let me pop up into the installer. This is what you'll see as soon as you boot up um, the the ISO image for Arch Labs. So it says, you know, welcome, thank you for trying Arch Labs. To start the installation, run Arch Labs installer. So um, I've got my microphone set directly in front of my keyboard, so you will have to excuse me if I if I bump it while I'm typing here. But let's let's run this. I probably have to capture the keyboard somehow. 
Dun, dun, dun. Oh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, there it goes. Okay. There we go. Um, Arch Labs Installer. Cha cha. Checking connection. All right. Arch Labs Installer. It'll help you get Arch Labs set up on your system. Um, keep things simple. Default will be listed. So that's nice. Anything that's um, the, the easiest selections will be the defaults. Select items with the arrow keys. Use space to toggle and enter to confirm. Tab to... S okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Page up, page down. Press the highlighted key of an option to select it. Okay. Excellent. So, system key map. U.S. English. I'm in the United States, and I speak English. So that's what we're going to do. Um, this is the menu where you prepare your system for the install. To begin the system, you must have a root partition mounted. Um a new user created and the password set. Okay, once the above requirements are met and you have gone through any optional setups, you can uh, steps you like the install. Okay, so let's go down here, mount and format partitions. Choose carefully. Um, they can be mounted without formatting. Whatever, whatever. The exception to this is the root partition. It needs to be formatted before you. So, um, this is a BIOS system, so I will do the one partition option here. Um, so let's do edit partitions. So um, I'm in a virtual machine, obviously, so I'm going to be doing a full device automatic partition. Um, you know, if you have a system where you want to do a dual boot, that's going to be a little bit more tricky. Um, shouldn't be too bad you just need to make sure that you have a partition on the system um, that's blank and ready to be installed on and then you can format it using this tool um, probably using the view partition table uh, option here and it'll show you all the partitions and you should be able to um, set up the one you want so but but I'm using a virtual machine so I'm gonna do the auto partition full device okay all the data on SDA will be destroyed and the new partitions will be created. Um, sounds good. Uh, boot partition, all the remaining space. Yep, 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 yep. Looks good. Removing the partition setting table to MS DOS. Boot partition and the root partition. And that is now our. Uh, our hard drive setup. Sweet. Okay, so that's done. I uh, do not want to encrypt, although if you wanted to encrypt your disk using the LUX system, you could do it um, from there, I would assume. Um, LVM, uh, I'm not going to do LVM, but that, I believe that makes it easier to move from one system to another um, or one installation to another, but I'm not going to do that. I will mount and format the partitions. The root partition will be installed on SDA2. Use space to toggle. I don't want to toggle any of these. Not selecting any. Okay. Don't need any of those extra flag things. Uh, bootloader. I like grub. I use grub. Let's do grub. Looks good. Setting the device flags. Uh, select whether you want to use a swap file or none. So this is nice because it looks like, um, well, I'm going to hit this and see what it does, but it looks like it may automatically make a swap partition for you. Enter the size of the swap file. Yeah. Um, so for anybody who doesn't know, uh, a swap, uh, the swap partition of a hard drive uh, is a section of the hard drive that is partitioned off if you run out of RAM, um, or if your RAM is struggling, sometimes it'll dip into the swap space and it'll kind of use part of your hard disk as um, kind of a faux RAM, if I understand it correctly, which it, it's granted, it's possible that I don't, but um, I never actually Googled it, but I think that's, I'm pretty sure that's what it does. Um, da, 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 same size as the memory. That's typically what they um, recommend, I think. Um, Unless you have a lot of RAM, then I think you can get away with just doing half. But 
Uh, that number looks good to me. Create user set password. Username. Tellurian. E. Okay, let's go. Can I go down? Yep. Okay. Password. I believe you have to. Ooh, hold on. Ooh, I hit tab. That's right. Can't do that. There we go. Jeez, I'm so used to uh, tabbing from one section to another. Um, so let's get the uh, password typed in there. Enter root password. Empty uses the password entered above. Um, it's probably not super secure to do this, but I do it anyway. Um, for my own ease of use, I usually use the same password for my um, my user account as the root account. So leave that open. Configure system settings. Let's take a look here. A shell for the new user and root bash. Um, a host name. Arch Labs looks good. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it Arch Labs. That's fine with me. Uh, the locale. Um, English US is English US. That would make sense. Okay, so let's go to English US UTF 8. I'm in America. The nearest city, Detroit. Confirm the time zone. That's good. Um, okay, so we can select our kernel. This is kind of cool. Um, so you can do the vanilla Linux kernel, whatever, with some patches. Um, the long-term support one. Um, let me see. Zen and Hardened I'm not familiar with. I'm going to stick with the regular one. Um, to be honest, if you're running Arch, you probably don't want the LTS one anyway because Arch, like the whole purpose of Arch is to be kind of on the bleeding edge and everything gets updated immediately, um, which is, you know... For some people, they like it. I, I've liked it. I mean, so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that one. I think that looks like a solid option between those. Sort the mirror list automatically. So this is nice that they do this because a lot of um, OSs don't. A lot of the d Linux distros don't do this. They just apply the default, um, or they just um, rely on you to know where the the closest mirror is to you for like downloading all of the. Um, updates and the files that you'd need to install the system and I'm really glad that they do this um, Linux Mint does a similar thing where you can automatically sort by whatever the fastest mirror is which may not even necessarily be the closest one to you um, it may just but it sorts by the um, I'm not sure if it's the ping response time or the average download speed or whatever but um, so let's do that let's automatically um, select window manager or desktop so this Let's see. Oh, this is very okay. Very nice. Very nice. So, um, open box is the default, uh, I believe. I mean, that's kind of the whole point. Arch Labs is um, based on Bunsen Labs, which, as far as I know, is just an open box Debian um, kind of a clone of Arch or of, uh, of Crunchbang. So, I guess let's install open box just because it's the default. Um, let's skip GNOME for now. We can install that later if we want. Um, an Arch system to me is entirely supposed to be blazing fast. Um, I mean, really, really quick, pretty lightweight. Um, so I'm going to do XFCE4 because that's what I would use if I was going to set this system up for me. And that's what I'm going for with this video. Um, I would get XFCE4 and then, um, you know, go from there. So let's get that. Make sure I don't need anything else. KDE Cinnamon. No, that looks good. So I'll hit enter and move on. Which login management? Um, so you can either you just use the console or you can do um, the LightDM login manager. That's, I like LightDM. Um, you can customize it quite a bit if I recall correctly and so you can make it look however you want and that might be something that we explore when when I do the uh, the customization uh, video follow-up to this so let's hit that um, select additional packages okay this is nice 
See, and uh, I hate to go off on a tangent here, but this is one of the this is one of the better um, installers. Like like um, what is it? The Manjaro Architect installer is a similar thing. This is one of the better console um, installers that I've used because it lets you. It doesn't wait until the system is installed to to make you pick the things you want to install. Um, which most do, you know, you, you stick in the, the live disk, you install based on that, and then whatever was on the live disk, that's what's on your system, and then you add later the stuff that you want. This is cool. So if I want Firefox, go in there, hit space, boom, I got Firefox. Chromium, eh, I'm not a fan of Google. Um, I'm not going to use that, but um, you have all these other options here. That's, but I just want Firefox. That's, that's pretty sweet. Text editor. Neo Vim, nah, let's do mouse pad is I believe the default um, one that comes with like Manjaro and stuff. Lightweight, simple, looks good. Let's do that one. File managers, Thunar is my jam. Um, I like that you can that you can mix and match and you can get all the different ones you want. Um, yeah, PC Man FM is a lightweight one. Um, Nautilus, that's the GNOME one. And it looks like the rest of these are... So, uh, let's get File Roller just in case. Thunar is the default XFCE for the most part. Um, so, that's what I'm going to throw on here. It's a good one. Um, Thunar also works well with lightweight um, desktop environments or window managers. So, like, if we did decide to go in and use the open box um, you know the the open box environment Thunar would run just fine anyway and it's you know it's it's got all the features you want and it's lightweight and it looks good so let's go with that terminal emulator um, terminator tabs and grids terminators pretty cool um, I'm a little sad they don't throw some of the fun ones on here like um, Oh, what is it called? Terminology is a cool one. Um, it's like an elementary-based looking one. It's you know, it looks cool. Or um, cool retro term, I think, is one that that's pretty cool looking. Um, these are all just kind of the the defaults, the the boring ones. A lot of people use Terminator because it lets you um, tile the different. Um, oh, you know the the uh, you can have multiple different instances running at once all tiled and gridded which is cool but again um, XFCE is what I'm gonna use it's a good terminal it does what you need music and video players man they really just include everything on here don't you um, that is cool so media player based on M player um, MPV is good. I like um, VLC is good. Uh, I usually only install it if there's um, a codec that whatever I'm using doesn't recognize. So um, let's just do that. Let's do MPV. I like MPV. Audio player, audacious. We can throw that on there too. Um, let's see. Rhythm box, if you want to play music, um, kind of based on like a library, throw that on there. Most of these are pretty small, I think. So uh, let's go with that. Looks good. Chat and mail. Um, I understand why they don't. I'm a little disappointed that they don't have um, what is it, MailSpring on here. That's what I've been using, and I've been using the web version of. Um, like Gmail forever, but I've been kind of shifting back to the client um, with MailSpring because it is really good. Um, yeah, I mean, all these are good. Let's just throw Thunderbird on there for kicks and giggles and whatnot. Um, Office and Professional, full featured Office Suite, can't go wrong with LibreOffice, throwing that on there. Um, GIMP, perfect. Inkscape, good. OBS. I mean, I, I would have no use for OBS on this particular system, but it's cool that you can install. Um, really, I don't need these either, but um, we'll throw them on there just for the sake of doing it. 
um, Caden Live, Open Shot, Audacity, GovC View. So all of these are applications that I've installed before, other than this Krita app, which I don't I don't know what that is, but um, apparently you can edit and paint images. So <laughs> that's uh, these are all good applications. I appreciate that they give you this big list. So let's just move on from here. Image and PDF viewers. Uh, nah, don't need any of those. Additional fonts. Hand groomed. All, okay, well, let's install that just because. Just for the sake. Um, now, this is cool. The, the Noto fonts, you can get those, the Google um, fonts. So let's do that. That looks good. Yeah, we'll get just those. Torrent clients. Deluge transmission. I like both. Um, I'll use transmission. Transmission is the default for a lot of systems, so that's good. Um, GNOME disk utility, GNOME system monitor. Let's th throw both of these on there just in case. Miscellaneous. What is this? Steam. Okay, so that's cool. They give you an option to install Steam out of the box. That's neat. Um, advanced color picker. I like that. Um, Plank, not going to use it, but that would be cool. Docky, yep, 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 Cairo Dock. So that's cool that they give you these options. Um, we can return to the main menu, check configuration choices. That's just going to give us a list of all of our. <laughs> this is really a very good, um, so far I'm really liking this installer. Unless it totally borks, like on the actual installation, I'm very into this. I could definitely see myself using this um, to install a an arch system um, on my main machine so if that tells you anything um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this perform the installation it's probably gonna take a little bit of time um, but I am going to um, just cut the video here and I will pick you guys back up when something interesting on the screen happens All right, so it looks like the installer has finished. Um, that was probably a good, uh, you know, 15 minutes, I would say, um, that that took, which is quite a bit longer than uh, a normal ISO image, um, like a live installer would take, um, at least on this system. That, of course, uh, depends on the uh, which um, Linux uh, distribution you're installing. If you're installing something huge like, um, you know, like the full blown SUSE install, um, that might take a while. This is probably going to depend on your network speed combined with your um, your disk read and write because, um, you know, everything that we selected to install it had to go download. So there was you know, six hundred plus megabytes of um, stuff that it has to download then process and install and all that so it, it took a minute but um, it does appear to be finished so uh, let's take a look here before exiting you can select configuration files to review or change I don't think I need to do any of that business if you need to make other changes with the drives mounted use control Z to pause the installer when finished whatever whatever Okay, so I don't think I need to go through and edit any of this, so let's just hit enter and see what happens. Oh, it looks like we're back. Um, I don't know what happened. I, uh, I hit enter because I'm an idiot, and... Uh, <laughs> and... Uh, it took me in to, of course, like an idiot, I scrolled down to here, I'm thinking, okay, I'll get down to the OK button and hit hit Enter. Um, and, of course, that took me into an editor, and it took me into Vim, which I never use. I, I typically use Nano. Um, so I had to figure out how to get out of the editor. Um, 
But we are back. Everything's done. I'm going to select on the finished option, exit the installer and reboot, and let's see what happens. Looks like it's shutting down, stopping the login service, and I'm getting notifications. Ooh, my computer is mad at me. Okay. There we go. We'll go back up. And it looks like we are booting back up. Yeah, there we go. So let's hit enter real quick or full screen. Sweet. So yeah, now we're at the light DM um, installation screen. This looks like uh, their own custom thing. That's pretty cool. Um, and then up here, of course, you can select which one you want. The default right now is set to open box. Um, just so we can uh, see the default, let's log into this really quick. Just to see what it looks like by default with the open box uh, window manager. Looking very plain. J okay, all right. So that's not half bad. That looks like um, it looks almost exactly like the um, Manjaro open box. Um, yeah, sweet. So uh, this is a pretty nice little setup here, if I'm being honest. I think um, you could probably pretty comfortably live in this just on its own. Um, comes with a lot of cool stuff. Office, obviously, I had it install that. Um, so that's up here. And then, of course, when you right-click, that's when you get the, um, you know, your stereotypical... Um, open box. I think got some nice compositing going on. This is very nice. I was not expect. I was very much expecting a um, vanilla installation. So that's pretty cool. Um, well, why don't we go ahead and exit open box? Let's log out um, and let's check out XFCE and see if that's the default. Because um, if they've done any theming to that, it might be pretty nice as well. And we won't have to go quite as far to do some uh, some adjusting. And so it looks like it's pretty much, this is definitely uh, pretty much the standard plain Jane. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I think this is, this is the standard um, XFCE. Maybe not, but I think it is, so... Um, at any rate, it's not quite what we want, but it's not that far off. So um, it looks like it's got some nice icons going. These are, I'm not sure, I don't think these come by default. So um, yeah, I think there's some, definitely some uh, some adjustments that have been made here um, that are going to look pretty sweet when we get it all um, customized up. But um, so that'll be in the next video. Make sure to stop by and check on that one uh, when that gets uploaded. Thank you so much for sitting through this uh, probably very long video. Um, the installation took quite a while. Um, I got stuck a couple of times. I had to uh, find my way out, but I think we'll be we'll be just fine. Um, I'll cut those spots out for you, but. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for uh, sticking around, and uh, be sure to like the video, leave a comment. Um, I love interacting with uh, you guys in the comments, so make sure to um, you know leave a comment and um, subscribe if you're not already, and I will see you guys in the next one.